Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming in for my haul, my collection, rather. This is not quite a haul, though I could probably show you some handbags that I hauled recently. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well. I know it's late, but sometimes we do come on late. I hope you enjoy looking at jewelry and handbags as much as I do. This channel actually is mostly about jewelry. I do a lot of thrift hauls, jewelry hauls, um, jewelry and baggings, that kind of thing. But today I thought I would do an updated version of my handbag haul. And I hope um, I can get some people in the chat. I think I enabled the chat. I sure hope I did. Let me know if you're in the chat. Say hello. Say um, peace, love, and harmony or something. <laughs> hey, Vanessa, I'm glad you're here. You're up late. You're up late. Someone should be here. Someone should break away from some of the auctions out there. There's so many auctions, I know. I watch them on rerun, too. <laughs> It saves me money that way. But I'm glad you're here, Vanessa. Thanks for being here. We're going to start, uh, I guess, with basically all of these handbags are mine. I buy some of them to sell, but there are some that will be mine till I get tired of them. And Because that's kind of the way it starts with me. It's, um, it's not so much always a catch and release, as they say, but I do like to enjoy my bags and wear them a while and use them a while as I meant to say, use, not wear, but I always say wear. I don't know. I just feel like you really do wear a bag, don't you? When you, oh, Vanessa, I forgot to tell you about, I don't know if you were there. You were there, but I don't know if you saw that I actually bought that little tiny Brighton. And I'm not sure if I, if I took it out of the car yet. <laughs> It might still be in the car, but it was the cutest little Brighton that I found at um, the Goodwill. And I thought I might enjoy using that little Brighton. It's just a really square, small square, rather, uh, really flat, almost like an envelope style. Did you see it, Vanessa, when I did the, my latest Goodwill thrift along? Anyway, I'm going to say hello to a couple people in the chat really quick, and then we'll start with the handbags because it's going to take us all night. And then we'll talk about handbags if you want to as well. Hey, Kathleen, we'll talk about your favorites or what you don't like about handbags. There's some people that absolutely detest them or they just use them because they have to. But I don't know. I find them very, very fun. I love shopping for them. I love owning certain brands. There are brands that I absolutely adore and um, not everything they put out, of course, but you know, I just love handbags. So again, I don't even, I've never, I really don't count them because there's so many that are in my, in my possession right now that will likely get sold. There's some that will never get sold. They're just my absolute favorites. But if you're new to the channel and you like handbags and you like jewelry, I hope you subscribe today. The subscription button's on the right. We do a lot of talk about jewelry, but we also do a lot of talk about everything else that's, that's fun and fashionable and just, um, you know, what we all like to enjoy in life, right? Looking nice, sporting nice things. Let me start with, I'm not going to start with the Prada. That's one that's definitely going to stay in my possession. I do have some bags that I bought retail, but I was telling you the other day from the mall, from the gallery in Houston, where things are, are very poshy and, uh, but as I was saying, lots of things were on sale and I did get some wonderful bargains. But where you walk into a store and you will pay $2,000 for a little coin purse like this, maybe. You can do that. So, uh, but I like everything from the vintage to the poshy, but I really do enjoy, and I have bought them retail. As you know, I've bought Louis Vuitton's retail full price. I found them on eBay at a good savings, and I have found them in a bin at the Goodwill for incredible prices. I have found everything from Gucci to YSL to, uh, have I found a Louis Vuitton? I don't believe I've ever found a Louis Vuitton at a thrift store that wasn't fake. They're usually fake there. Uh, the Louis for some reason are usually fake. I did see a really good fake Prada last night. It was a little leather one, but it just looked really cheap on the writing. You could kind of tell. And then the R has a little curve on the Prada that this one didn't have. But it was made of very fine materials. But I hate fakes. And I will show you some fakes that I picked up accidentally. I Well, not accidentally. I picked them up to study them because they look very genuine. And uh, I, will never I will never resell a fake. I may give it away, but I will not sell it. And uh, that was a Goyard. 
I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Goyard to totes. They're beautiful. But I love things like these little clutch bags. This one is Bags by George. Look at that amazing mirror. That is like a humongous mirror. I cannot even believe the size of it. Sorry if I blinded you. And it's just a hard box clutch. I have actually lent this to two of my daughter's friends when they went to prom. They, they loved it so much. And I used to pin, and I regret it now, I used to pin little brooches on them. It's got a little bit of a blister there from me pinning it. But look how gorgeous that one is. That's rhinestones. And I also love to use it on my dresser for jewelry. And uh, so this is definitely one of my favorites. Thank you again for being here for the purse collection video. This is one, uh, I think I did find this at a thrift store. This is a Lotus brand. I love this one too. These chains are still pretty popular. I do see them a lot. Of course, Chanel always, you know, has maintained their little chain look. So I love this flat envelope style and that really thick grain leather. It's beautiful inside to burgundy leather. One of my favorites. I have offered this one for sale before and I'm surprised it hasn't sold. I think I even have it on my, on my um, Etsy, if I'm not mistaken. No, not Etsy. eBay and Posh. Then this is one that I cannot even believe I scored this, but this Prada was coming out of the back of the Goodwill. I saw this gentleman, the one that was working there, he just had it in his hand. And I would say, what's that? <laughs> Let me see that. And of course I bought it. I think I paid either 25 or 40, something like it wasn't 10. It was, it was kind of high for Goodwill standards, right? What is this? Oh, I've got a Prada case. <laughs> I've been wanting to list this because all of these things sell too. It's a little brought up leather, actually. Um, so I investigated it thoroughly, definitely genuine. This is heavy. This bag must weigh two pounds. This is thick, heavy leather. I absolutely adore this bag. It has, I think it's called laundered leather or washed leather, the style of this product. So definitely genuine Prada. And uh, yeah, pick this one up at my at my local Goodwill. I love this bag. It's already heavy. It's, it has nothing in it. But see, like, it's not a comfortable bag, right? But there's just something so pretty about it that I really, really love it. It's got really nice pockets and zippers. The lining is impeccable. The quality is everywhere. You know, I run into a lot of fake bags, and the first thing I look at is the lining. If the lining is cheap, the bag is fake. That's one of the first things, one of the first telltale signs. Of course, there's the Prada, you know, how you can look at the, like the ones they have with the silver. But we're not going to go into that right now. We're just going to, we're just going to show them to you. But there's, there's just something about it that you know immediately when they're, when they're, fake. But everything that I researched about this bag, it took me a while to find it because Prada does put out a lot of styles and uh, retires them pretty quickly other than their nylon, you know, classic. So yeah, I was crazy for this one. And I know I have someone who's asking me to sell it for two years now, but I haven't sold it yet because this is one that I really do like. And I, and I've have found another Prada, a black nylon, um, crossbody but my daughter kept that one well I used it for two three years and then she asked me to give it to her so I gave it to her for now I may have to ask for it back I really like it and I miss it though I don't really use crossbodies I just use it when I travel that's when I use my small bags when I travel this is one I found last night this is the one I'm using right now it's um it's that Vera Vera Pella Vera or something like that made in Italy and it's a beautiful leather suede. It's a hard leather here. I really, really like it. You can even see the, the uh, naked leather there on the inside. <laughs> kind of looks like it has wings. And I just added my little Louis Vuitton luggage case and my key ring. I think it did have um, a long strap, but I went ahead and took it, you know, for the price they were offering it for in this condition. I, I didn't care. It's got feet too, so I love this one. 
Let me see who else is in the chat. Thank you again, guys, for coming in and talking about handbags with me. I appreciate it. Barbara's here, Gail DeFleur, Treasures, and thank you so much, Miss D or D Savvy Sinovich. All right, yeah, I really love this one. I think it's really cool. I love the way it kind of slouches like that. I love suede, and I think this is a nice color. So this is what I'm using right now. I did finally change. That's one of my bags. This is a fossil I did not get to show you at the auction because I think I'm going to keep it. I was feeling I was going to keep the orange one I sold at the auction tonight as well. But I decided to go ahead and show it. But this is one. I don't know if you remember me once doing a fossil, what's in my bag, or I think it was a what's in my bag. It was all this color, and I think they call this gloss, the gloss finish. And then it just says fossil, really, really understated right here. And this is a crossbody I got last night, too. I did shorten it just because I am really digging the way they're using the crossbodies now. They're using them even shorter than this. They're using them, like, right here, like, really secure. And I like the way they look. I really do. This is awesome. I found this one last night. I may have to keep it. Also, because I love light colored bags. I really like white bags too. This is cream eggshell. I'm definitely afraid of using them though because they get dirty. But I think I may keep this one. And there's the back of it. Really nice thick pebble leather as well. And um, it's, it's really in excellent condition. I don't think it's ever been used. The lining, I just stuffed it with stuff. But the lining is, hi, Guillermo. How are you? We're doing bags. Guillermo has bags, too. Oh, my goodness. So that one I bought last night as well. And then these are two that, again, I was going to keep the orange one, but I decided to go ahead and bring it to auction. And I like the gray one, too, and I cannot keep that many bags. How many have we shown already? Four. So these two definitely sold today. I love, see, it's how it's like a short. They're doing the short really really everywhere right now the short shoulder is back the shoulder strap is back or they're really cutting their uh, shortening their strap so that it's really right here so you can clutch it so this is the other one this is the same brand as the one i kept the uh, vera pele whatever vera pele made in italy and uh, it's gray it's kind of a um, never not yeah never full mm size I would say twenty inches was this one so that these two did sell at my auction tonight but I really wanted to keep this one also because it's that gorgeous uh, Hermes orange University of Texas burnt orange <laughs> as well I love that color so those did sell but. Um, all right, let me show you a couple of other must-haves for me. I will definitely never sell this one. I have used it a few times to work. It's a great work bag. This one is called Fancy, and I thought it was a Perlina. It feels like Perlina leather. It's a huge backpack. Not quite like a school backpack, but definitely not a mini backpack. And it's just the softest glove leather. And what I love about this leather is that it's not heavy. So I think that's fantastic. I love these for traveling too. I'll definitely use these in an airport. You know, you know what a backpack looks like. I, I definitely, this is something I would definitely use while in the airport, you know, traveling. Then I'd probably put a small bag inside. Pockets everywhere, but what I really love is this like lamb skin leather it's got a side pocket in the back it's just amazing and this was a thrift store find too so yeah it's called fancy craziest name that's it there that's what it says fancy 
I love it too. And I've had a few backpacks. I have a, a Vera Bradley. I have a couple of others. I like backpacks. I really do. I don't use them that much. I use them for work a little bit. I really do. But then I get into another bag and I'm stuck in that one like I was with that luggage that I love that I showed in my what's in my bag. But this is definitely one I'll keep. And then this is one I've been wanting to research it. And I haven't researched it yet. I've had it a little while. This is, a, I want to say Ted Baker, but it's not Ted Baker. It's Vin Baker. So I don't really know what the deal is with this one. Made in the USA. Vin Baker. And it has a magnetic closure. Again, it's those totes. And I'm just not used to totes. I think that's it. I really love it. I love the studs on this one. I love the crinkle or whatever they call this leather. I'm not sure. And um, I just think it's very stylish. Very, very what you're seeing on the in the magazines and the stores today. They're doing a lot of this like rough, almost biker looking stuff. I mean, really cool. So I like it for that reason, but I always feel like when it's open, not that somebody's going to pick my pocket or anything, but, you know, I hit the brake in my car and there it went. <laughs> That's more what I'm scared of. But I love the look of it and I still have to research. I really don't even know that name. Very much. I forgot. I think I bought it a year ago. This is an old vintage bag that's actually sold on Etsy, but then I couldn't find it. It has little crinkles and I added this chain to it because I thought it gave it a cute little vibe. And uh, you can actually use it as a, as a shoulder bag with the other chain. So I just love that. I don't know why. I just think it's kind of cute. And it's just a 50s, 60s church lady purse, you know? Really clean inside. <laughs> and I love the little ruching. It's not ruching, it's like smocked. It's incredible. All right, and I'm not going to show you every single bag I have, but how many have I shown you already? Oh, my gosh, I need to order one these bags. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, I love this one, too. I have tried to sell it, but the more I look at it, the more I love it. I love clutch bags. Oh, I just, and I love fringe. And to me, this is just such a cool bag. Again, 100% leather, suede. Let me see if anybody else. Hey, have you guys hit the thumbs up? Let me know if you have. Don't forget to do it. Really helps the channel. And uh, I appreciate it very, very much. If you would hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Hi, Miss Ann. We're just going through my bag collection. So, you know, sometimes when I bring things to auction, I'm praying after I've shown it to you and I'm selling it to myself again, pretty much. I'm kind of like, maybe they won't bid on it. Maybe I can keep it. And this has been one like that. Because this is a very expensive brand. I have looked this one up. And this is in... Oh, it's still tagged. It's still tagged. See, I forgot. Next. It's called Next. And it's still tagged. It's brand new. I guess it could be better if it had a strap for some people. But there's something so unique about a fringe bag that's a cuff. I mean, right? And then in this wine color. So one day I'll wear it. I know I will. And then I can't sell it because I have to take the tag off. But it's new with tags. 40 people watching. It is late, but I do appreciate you guys hanging around. And then it's got little studs. It's got it all going on. Of course, it lightens it up when I get close like that. But isn't that pretty? your favorite bag has fringe yeah uh, I had a I've had a few really cool bags that have had fringe and I had to sell one I didn't have to but I sold it because it was heavy and I knew I wasn't going to wind up using it when they're too heavy I just can't use them so I sacrifice them here's another essential bag I love this one I must have this one in every size but I do love this one because of the top handle, because of the size. It's kind of what they call a man bag, but bags 
men are using all bags right now. So that, that has gone out the door, but I think this one just has a, there's something about men's things that are simple and classic and therefore really sophisticated and that I really like. And this bag is one of those bags. I think I would have shortened it right about here. It's a little long right now. So many compartments. I think it's got a built-in wallet. It's got a free pocket here, you know, slide, slip. More pockets here. The main compartment has so many pockets. So it's perfect. And it's real soft biker jacket leather. Just incredible. This is one I will probably never sell. I do think I have about two others, but they're smaller than this one. Okay, let me show you what's in this big bag before we get, before I lose everyone from boredom. Are you guys bored? Let me know if you're enjoying this haul. I mean, this uh, collection video. <laughs> let me know with a one in the chat. Yes, a one means yes, you're enjoying it. I found this Dooney and Burke in Chicago. Um, I was actually in Chicago, what was it, two years ago. And I met up with um, Callie over at Hip Flippin' Mama. She wanted to meet me there. So we met there. And I bought so much stuff at the thrift store where we met that I said, I have to buy a bag to carry all the stuff back on the, on the uh, plane. So I found this Dooney. And it's like the perfect bag for traveling. It really is. And I was there at the thrift store. Four. And it's got it's a more modern duty. It's got the a little orange duck. I cannot believe it. And this is all real leather trim. And it was really clean inside. And here's the fake goyards. Really, really nice. I'll take these out. I nest my bag so they, they can fit. Otherwise, they take up the entire house. So yeah, I mean, I've gotten it a little solid from using it. But this is a perfect bag because it has a hook. I will never get rid of this bag. It has a hook. This fits under the seat of an airplane. This fits so many things. This was still made in the USA. <laughs> now Dooney's are made in China, I believe. So this one's fabulous. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. So sweet. Somebody put a one. <laughs> You guys were supposed to put a one if you were enjoying this haul or this collection. Was there something in this pocket? This oh, it's the strap. It even comes with a long strap. Did I even know that? I don't even think I knew that. So it's even got the long strap for, for hands-free. It's humongous. I used to have the uh, Louis Vuitton 55 heat ball. And I loved it. It was my prized possession. That one I did buy at Neiman's at retail. And uh, I think, you know what? It's gone up probably twice when I bought it in the 90s. Thank you for the number ones. Um, but it got to the point where I, even though it's canvas, it gets heavy. And I never had the strap for it. I used to use another strap from another purse. So, uh, but this one to me is even lighter weight. Yet I could put everything that I put in my 55 key ball. Granted, it was, it's not a Louis Vuitton, but I, you know, for convenience and it's still cute as heck, has DNBs, it's got plaid. And it was at a thrift store for what? I think I paid $14 for it. Love it. Chicago. Never sell this one. Yeah, I never will. All right. My beautiful friend, Vanessa sent me this or did I buy it? Vanessa, I don't remember. She's no, I think you gave me the wallet or I bought the wallet, but I also have the matching wallet. <laughs> I either bought one and she sent me the other as a gift, but I love this. This is a Sharif, another one that I will never ever sell. Patriotic Sharif, hand painted, all leather. It's got fireworks, it's got a bird, not the eagle, I don't believe. The uh, Lady Liberty, of course, front and back. And I love this little bag. It's a little small bag. I don't use it always because, you know, I use it for a while <laughs> because I have to have more room. Oh, what's this? Scarf. It's a cute scarf. So that's a Sharif. 
and these are all hand painted. They're so beautiful. And I do have the big zippy wallet, which I actually have to use on another purse because it's so big that it doesn't fit in here. But it's the same thing, red, white, and blue. Well, hi, Miss Lynn from Australia. Carrie's from Australia too. Right below you there. Introduce yourselves. <laughs> so another beautiful bag that I cherish because my friend Vanessa sent it to me or sold it to me, one or the other. Oh, I forgot to bring my Louis Vuitton. It's green. I'll have to bring that in a minute because I have the matching wallet. But I have a bucket bag with this epi leather of Louis Vuitton in green. Here's another one that I bought to sell. No one bought it. Now I'm going to keep it because it's an Eric Javits. And Eric Javits is a really expensive brand. And they make the straw bags and shoes like nobody's business. This is easily, I would say, well, their hats sell for about $500. So I would not be exaggerating to say this bag sells for $500 at retail. It's really gorgeous. And it has a zipper too. Red lining. Of course, I have it stuffed with something. I always stuff my bags with something so they don't lose their shape. And this one literally still has the card. Thrift store find as well. So I think I'm going to keep this one. I really do. I think I, I want to start using a summer bag in summer. Like a little straw bag. I love the fact that it has a zipper. I didn't even know it had a zipper. So, and feet. Cute. Okay. Let me see. Like I said, I'm not going to show you all of them. Just the ones that really will never leave me. Here's another one that I did offer at, a, at my auction. Didn't sell now. I will not. After I've seen what the Gucci's are selling for now, both at pre-loved condition, which you can easily see over at um, Dillard's. And I believe... Um, Fashion File is the one that supplies the Dillard stores with their pre-owned or pre-loved classic designer bags. Now that I see what they go for and what I would have been selling them for, I'm not selling this beautiful Gucci. It has the web pattern. It is trimmed in leather, leather here. I think I found this one for $14 at the Goodwill a couple of years ago. And I adore it. It's, it's a perfect size bag. Very understated with just the Gucci logo in the front there. And the straps fit right over. So it's like a perfect, perfect bag. You can put it like a baguette there, like that. So just another beautiful bag that won't leave me. I've offered it, <laughs> I think, once or twice. Like last year, and then this year, and then I thought, especially since I've been, um, you know, hunting for bags and things all the time, and then I see what they sell for, and how they bring the classic styles back, as, what do they call them, reissues, I was at Prada the other day, I don't know if you saw my Galleria video, and all the Prada, so there were reissues, the styles are reissues, because they're just so popular. This is the vintage luggage that I got at the Pilots Estate garage sale. That no, wasn't a garage, it was a estate sale. And, excuse me, I forced myself to get out of this bag because this is the perfect bag. My lunch fits in there, three bottles of water. I don't care if I, I even put mugs because I don't like to drink my coffee from my big tumbler. So I take a, a little porcelain mug to work every day. Even that goes in there. My cereal bowl and a, and a spoon, because sometimes I have cereal at work for breakfast or yogurt. Everything goes in this bag. It doesn't get damaged. It's It has no you know lining. It's just leather. So another one that I'm really glad I found. It has the name here. If you didn't see that video, you missed it. Carol, what is it? La Berry or something like that, California. Vintage 70s bag, I'm sure. That's it there. And I love it. Classic bag. I'll never get rid of it. Just for fun, I pick up things like this. I did use them. <laughs> the 
This is so cute. This has a lot of likes on Etsy. And uh, I think I did sell it once at an auction that I did um, for charity on YouTube. And then I didn't get paid for it. So it is staying with me. And let me see. Oh, I was going to show you the fakes. The fake Goyards. And I bought them because they look really good. And I wanted to inspect them. So they're amazing. They really are. They come with their little matching thing. And don't ever fall for the. <laughs> they feel good too. Don't ever fall for the serial number. This thing has so many serial numbers. And it looks so good. Are you guys familiar with the Goyard? These are even more expensive than Louis Vuitton. The genuine ones. Very nicely made tote. I mean, amazing. But it took a lot of inspecting. And it definitely is a fake. Then I actually got, I think I got another one. I used it and I used it. And that's when I started realizing after all the research, I still had some doubts, but the way it was wearing, the way it was wearing, I knew it wasn't real. So you know what I did? You're not going to believe it, but I did. I redonated it to the Goodwill, but I wrote in Sharpie on the inside, fake, fake, fake. I thought it gave it some charm. Here's the other one in the orange. So yeah, it started like peeling pretty quickly. But look at the stitching. It, they really went all out to make it look like a genuine Goya. And then they have this little hidden logo as well, if you're familiar with those. And this one also has the little matching bag. These are so cute. I really wish I could buy the real deal. See, serial numbers mean absolutely nothing. Anybody can throw a serial number on there. So those are the fake Goyards. That won't leave me. Unless I give them away. But I won't sell them. Okay. Let me see what else I have here. Unless, oh, here's the green. Uh, Louis. I like their Epi leathers. I have a lot of little bags in here, but I won't take those out. I like little clutch bags. I love these too. These little snake bags. This is like an 80s. Beautiful blue though. And uh, yeah, this is my Louis Vuitton Epi leather in green. And I have the matching wallet right here and I have some little boot charm there I love this little boot charm it's just fabric I just like it it's fun oh it was so good Lois it was a really good dinner we had a good time I was going to come home and have some chocolate that uh, Liz sent me I haven't indulged in some chocolate she sent me some Ghirardelli and all kinds of chocolate so that's what I'm going to have in a little while. Still got some more bags to show you. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Give it a thumbs up if you are. Yeah, that is a cool purse. 22 minutes already, Deborah. Well, I'm glad you're here. Oh, I love the green too. I love a pop of color. This is when everyone had a green bag. I was really enjoying it. Lots of people were wearing green bags about 10 years ago, weren't they? But I love the Louis Vuitton Epi leather. I really do. I don't get tired of it. I want a red one in the doctor bag style. Okay, here's one I just bought. Uh, this is another brand for those of you who resell. Another brand to look out for, especially in the shoes, is SAS. These are hand-sewn bags and hand-sewn shoes. And this is, there's just something, I know it looks simple and like what is that but there's something about the color and the fact that this is like feather light yet it's real leather that i adore about this bag so i'm not ready to sell it yet i just got it the other night but it's one that i mean i could really to me this looks like 
an expensive bag. And it is an expensive bag, actually. It's not a designer Louis bag, but this is not, you know, a Target bag. And I don't know if they even still make them, but try comping SAS shoes and um, handbags on eBay and you'll see what I'm talking about. And this is dead stock. This is actually, I think it stands for San Antonio Shoes. That's what SAS stands for. And this one just has a simple zipper here. It's total dead stock, clean inside. I have it stuffed, of course. It has, here's the, this is kind of their signature. They always put one of these key fobs. And these are hand-sewn handbags. There's something about this bag that I really like. I think it's timeless. And this is like from the 70s. Oh, I'm so glad, Miss Donna. Wasn't that a cute bag? So I love this bag. I don't know why. I just think it's super cute. I may give it to my mother because it's so lightweight. She hates heavy purses. But either way, I'm not ready to sell this bag. There's something I really like about it. It doesn't scream, you know, Louie or Prada or anything. But to me, it just screams nice, classy little bag. And it's just got a little knot. That knot was intentionally put there. So it's not a crossbody. There's no way you can take it out. It was just put there, honestly, I believe, to hold the two straps together. Because two straps can be cumbersome. They kind of, uh, they fall off your shoulder sometimes. I love the Italian bags. Anything Italian I'm getting. These are very likely 60s. I just think they're so cute. They almost remind me of the early Hermes bags. And I think this is a... One of them was a fit of that one. I never sold that one. This one, you can actually shorten the strap so you can make it small. Thank you, Yolanda. This is by Corette with the, it's got like a Giselle or somebody with long, some animal with long horns. Is that a Giselle or just whatever it's called? Gazette. What is that animal with long <laughs> That's the, the logo. And it's got little chain with a coin purse is that the cutest thing ever this feels so nice what is that animal with the super long antlers and it's genuine leather look how gorgeous this is accordion compartments a, a little kiss purse on a delicate chain amazing Love this bag, too. Corette. K-O-R-E-T. Isn't that beautiful? Gazelle. Am I saying it right? Gazelle or Gazette? Gazelle. Gazelle. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> My brain cannot think sometimes, especially at this hour. This one, I'm not sure what the brand is. 68 people here now. Thank you. I hope you guys aren't bored yet. Give it a thumbs up if you are enjoying this. This one is by, I can't pronounce, well, I can't pronounce it, but I can barely read it. It's something with an S, Morschino or something like that, made in Italy as well. Just love these structured bags. I really do. And here is... This is one I've also used and loved. And this is made in Boulder, Colorado, Mars, Maruca. It's like, a, it reminds me of a, a woman's dress. It's a beautiful brocade, kind of quilted, beautiful lining. And then it's just got a leather strap. But it's really kind of like a little carpet bag or something. Speaking of carpet bags, I'm gonna show you the carpet bag before I forget that I was talking to you about the other night at the Goodwill when I was, where did I leave it? When I was telling you that they replaced, here it is, the strap on it for free. And this was another fabulous Surfstar find. And I have used this for a travel bag and that's how I lost the strap. Isn't that cute? This is a weekender, and this company still exists. They are called the Carpet Bagger. 
Where are they from? An original from the carpet. Lynchburg. There it is right there. And they make purses too. So this strap is interesting because it weaves through the handles, right? And then you pick it up and it closes the bag. So it's quite interesting. And I tried replacing it with a belt and I thought I could do this or the other, but I couldn't because when I went to Chicago one time, it has like a little, um, I don't know what, what you call that fabric, really nice fabric for the lining. Um, they took the strap off and they said they were going to put it inside as it went through the lug. I should have just carried it on. I don't know why I did. But anyway, they lost it. I was left without a strap for a while. I wrote to the company and the company sent me a brand new strap to put on there. And it took, a, it took me a while to figure out how to put it back on. But I could not believe they did that. So if you can find them online, you should patronize them. All right, this is an old alligator bag, but this part cracked. And this is genuine croc, I believe. Escort bag is what it says. So I thought I would put like a little Chanel esque type of chain on it one of these days i'll fix it but i love it i got it for i think six dollars still has the price 6.79 i'm holding on i do want to fix this bag i love it i think it's so cute okay let me show you my other louis vuitton that i love and Juni. And Longchamp. All right. This one has been around since Twiggy. Twiggy actually modeled this one. The ad is on Google if you want to Google it. And it's the Papillon. And I've told you in my before, I know, for those of you who've been watching my videos a while, I do what's in my bag videos quite a lot. And I've done this bag. This is a fun bag. <laughs> quite a few times. I've bought and sold this bag three times. And I finally decided to just keep it. Because I keep wanting it back. And I had originally bought mine at Neiman's. Less than $1,000 in the 90s. I had originally bought it. And it comes with the mini Papillon as well. And then I think I sold my mini Papillon on eBay. Kept the bag for a while, then sold it, then I rebought it, then I sold it again because they've made it in the um, the other kind of leather, the brown, and this is the vaquetta leather. So then I decided I'm going to get the one that's in vaquetta leather. It's got a little fancier clip than my other one that I showed you in my what's in my bag, but I adore this purse. And um, as I said, it's been around since the um, the Twiggy days. Because they have an ad of Twiggy actually modeling this bag. And it's a classic. You'll see a lot of people that love Louis Vuitton own this bag. It's called the Papillon. And I love it. And they did make a smaller one as well. A little smaller than this. But definitely one of my favorites. Just a fun, cute, fashionable bag. It does hold a lot. It, you can't put it over your shoulders. So, you know, if you need that hands free, sometimes it might get in the way but it's it's a really really cute one and you can still get them i mean i used to see them all the time for under 500 on ebay i don't know about now like i said some of these prices in the bags have really skyrocketed even the pre-loved this one's called stash it matches my outfit doesn't it i just love it it's like um it's like something that was made at etsy or something i want to say and it's still got the card stash full leather as well just a fun little bag really lots of people are getting these tiny bags just to carry their phones it's like they only need their phone you know that phone is our little carry-on pet pretty much we always have it in our hands so a lot of people are just getting the bags for their phones now the mini bags are so popular but Dooney did a mini bag a while back this is a fabulous one from Dooney. My daughter had this one for quite a while. And she would even fashion it in the back so that she could make the straps be like a backpack. 
when she'd skate or something. But I love this bag and anything. I really want the one with the duck covering the entire surface of the bag, but I've never found one at a reasonable price. But yeah, this is a super cool Dooney and Burke mini bag. You can't even put your phone in this one. You'll have your phone in your pocket, but you can put your money in there at least. La Rub Dubin's leather wax on the croc. Oh, okay. And that makes it shiny. So this is really cute. And this is a full crossbody. I actually had this strap curled up. I've had this put away for probably two years. It's so cute. So I'm going to leave it on the strap for a little while. Just wrink, take those wrinkles out of that strap. That's the Dooney. Here's an amazing long shot. This one I like as much as I like the, uh, the Prada. They, they're very comparable in my opinion, except this is suede. And I love the understated name on this one. Another fabulous surf star find. That's why I think a lot of things go undetected, like the ones that don't scream logos. Because many times it's funny, as you guys know, those of you who thrift, you'll see the coach bags, the Louis behind the counter, and they're fake. But because they're screaming logos, the people that work there are like, oh, that's, you know, a designer bag, and we're going to price it accordingly and so forth. And they can't tell the difference between a fake and a genuine bag, so they put them in there. Whereas these little logos, and I have found the same thing happen with Gucci. I have found a Gucci. I'll, have, I'll show you the other Gucci, but this one screams Gucci. But I have found the Gucci's that only have the horse bits. And you have to look inside to see the Gucci, the older ones, like from the 80s and 90s. So those go undetected too. But I love this long shop. It's huge. There's a Dooney in here. We nest. <laughs> we nest the bags. Another Dooney that I will never sell. I will definitely keep it. It's got a beautiful little fob there. This one has the long shop tag also right here. Right here in the corner. I don't know if it has a serial number. I never really looked at it. But it's an incredible bag. It probably does. And I like the way it snaps right there, too. So you can make it a little bit skinnier if you want. Give it a little profile, pretty little profile. When I've used it, I have used it to travel. It's for a card. And... Uh, Love it. Just absolutely love it. I put everything in here. Books, you know, when you go on the airplanes and uh, you have to have your water bottle and your books. And there you go. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it wasn't much. This was definitely a score from the thrift store. This Dooney, I also found at the Goodwill. Now, I think I have shared the strap with another Dooney. And I'm not even sure if I have a strap on this one. I don't believe I have a strap right now. I think I sold all my Dooney straps. So if anybody wants to send me a Dooney strap <laughs> or sell me one. But I love this bag anyway because it's a mini, it's a mini brief. <laughs> it's a mini brief. I mean, Dooney. Oh my gosh, Dooney is so genius. I love their 80s bags. They are so amazing. And I know I will find a Dooney and Burke strap somewhere. I could easily get one on eBay too. But like I said, I sold a Dooney and I, I had the other Dooney didn't have a strap. So I took the strap off of this one that matched it perfectly, of course. And that bag sold. And now this one does not have a strap. I need a strap, but it looks gorgeous like this. And this is probably the way I would use it anyway. You bought a Prada bag at the Goodwill for $4. Oh, there's so many different ways to tell. Send me a picture. I'll take a look at it, but you got to get really clear photos. I'll take a look at it and see what I know about it. I did see a fabulous fake last night, though, but everything else about it told me it wasn't. First of all, the, the Prada lining, they didn't bother with the lining. The Prada lining says Prada, 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 and has zigzags or some kind of an embossment on it. That wasn't even on the bag I saw last night, though it was made of fabulous leather. It was a, a really nicely made bag other than that, but they left out that pertinent detail. So I knew it was fake. Plus the, um, 
the way they wrote Prada, the R has a little, like a little upturn on it. That was missing too. So many times things are obvious to those of us who have researched it a bit, but not obvious to everyone because they do use, many times they do use really good materials. Many times they don't. But, you know, they will put real leather and make it look, you know, like that Goyard looks fantastic. But it's right. Fake, fake, fake. Counterfeit. All right, let me see what else I have to show you. Oh, the Gucci. This I've actually found two Gucci's in the Ophidia pattern. And I did sell one at auction only because it was very similar to this one. It was a little longer, and I really didn't see any reason to have two of them. So that's why I sold it. But I found one. I believe it was 50. It was behind the counter of a thrift store, and I paid 50 for it. I don't remember if it was this one or the other one that I sold. And then I found one for $10, and they were pretty much identical. And this is one I'll never part with. They actually brought this one back, too. So this is the Ophidia, Ophidia pattern and design where it has the green and red. It's got the webbing. It's got the no mistaking it for Gucci leather. There's no other leather made like this. And uh, so this one I will definitely keep. It's the only one I have left. I did find two that year. It was my lucky year to find Gucci. And I, like I said, one of them I paid about 10. The other one I paid 50. Both were genuine. They, also, let me just tell you about Gucci lining. It can get crumbly, but I did figure out a way to fix it because this is like a, this is like a, what do you call it? Like a chamois. So for being stored and these are, this is an original from the 80s. So this is not like what they've reissued, right? I don't know how the reissues are, but when bags are stored and not properly cared for in the right temperatures, they can get that way. But I took, um, took the liberty to kind of just shake it all out. I believe I even washed it a little bit on the inside, pulled out the lining, was able to wash out some of that. But this one didn't have very much peeling, I don't believe so. And it's perfectly fine now. I have yarn in there right now. But that is what it looks like too. And there's the cereal. But more than the cereal number, that doesn't tell me anything, honestly. There's a lot more to it than that. So that was a great find with the Gucci. I will definitely keep that one forever. I love that style. And it's small. And occasionally I do like to use a small bag. So. And this is the, my, my prized possession too. I didn't use it. I haven't used it for two springs. Because I usually pull them out at springtime. But I treated myself to this one. This is the uh, Jessica Simpson Days. And this one was um, Louis Vuitton design in homage to Courtney Love. It's actually called the Courtney. It's got a little rocker vibe. I love it. It's an amazing bag. I like it in white. I did have one of these in the black smaller bag, but I don't know. I like the white. So just an amazing bag. I know it's flashy. It takes up the entire, it sucks out the energy of any room you go into <laughs> and it puts it right inside its red line. Oh, really Carrie? I have this stuffed as well. And it's just got a beautiful red, deep red lining. It's got feet. And I got this about, well, I don't know, five years ago for my birthday. I'd had my eye on it for a while. It was already vintage when I fell in love with it. And I still love it. And it also has a strap, a long strap that came with it. And I used that strap with my other Louis Vuittons. Because I have a Speedy, but it's not a bandolier. A bandolier is the one that comes with the strap. This one came with a strap. So it does have the long, beautiful strap as well. And that's definitely my top of the line there. <laughs> top of my collection, one of my favorites. 
And along with that one, there's another lily that I love. If I can find it, here it is. This is another, this one I found on eBay. This one is actually doubled in price because this is vintage also from the Sprouse, from that rather collective collaboration with the artisan that did the, the graffiti line. This is a huge bag. It came in this huge bag. But I bought it, this one came out, I don't know, 20 years ago. And I bought this one probably eight years ago on eBay. And the prices for these bags have doubled than what from what I paid for. And I do have a what's in my bag featuring this one. I adore this bag too. I always wanted it as soon as it came out. As soon as the gra graffiti line came out, I wanted it. And I do love the hot pink color and the green one too. But I like this one too. And it's very neutral. This one also I use with the strap from the uh, Courtney. So this is the Speedy 30. I've had the Speedy 25. I had it in the checkerboard pattern or the, what's it called? The Abine. Is it the Damier Abine? I forget which one's called what, but um, the Damier, yes. But not the, not the light colored one. I had the 25 in the dark. But I could not ever get anything out of my purse. It has such a small opening that I, maybe I just put too much stuff in it, that I, every time I looked for something, I had to pull every single thing out. It was ridiculous. So, yeah, this is one of my favorite, favorite bags. I was going to use this one, but I decided to use that new one. I may probably open the year with this one. Then move into my Courtney Love bag so I can use it this year. And I do, I don't know if you noticed, but I put ribbons on the hardware because the hardware is genuine brass and it can damage the leather when it's rubbing against it in storage. So be sure that you take care of your bags that way. So there's definitely a lot of other bags that I have that I've bought for resale. I have some Pell. I mean, some Perlinas. I just found this one. This is a Lane Turner. I love these little beachy bags. And I'll probably bring these to my auction when it's, you know, spring and summer. So uh, let's chat. And then I think we're finished. Tons and tons of bags. Here's another one, Sharif. I love this little metallic. This is probably 90s bag. Cute messenger bag. I'm, I'm really trying to use messenger bags, too. Especially when you shop. Like the other day, I was using that big bag at the mall. I was regretting it. I was It was hurting me. And um, you've seen where I've put my bags down. And definitely there's, you know, there's room for those little bags. You have an old Dooney and the color has rubbed off. Love. Thank you so much. Well, Beverly, I appreciate you being here. Yeah, I love that Dooney that I showed you. I, I don't think I left too many things out. See, but I pick up little bags like this too for resale because people, they they like the little bag. This one has like a necklace chain. It looks like jewelry. It's amazing. But then sometimes like my husband will say, let's go get a bite to eat. I don't want to, I'm dressed up or something. I don't want to lug that luggage that I've been using for work. So I'll grab one of my little bags, put my wallet and my phone and I'm done. So I do definitely pull out the little bags. I hope you enjoyed the collection guys. Now I am faced with putting them all back and hopefully putting them back. Let me look in the Elmar make sure I didn't leave anything out. Because I have two Elmars where I keep them. This is one of those huge Elmars. I know you can't see it from over there, but this used to house my television. Before, you know, where everybody got the giant screens, we had, we were using Almars for TVs. I converted it to house my handbags, but I have handbags in my, oh, I didn't show you my other Louis Vuitton. Let me go get it. forgot about that. Let me get that one. I'll never forget.
Yeah, I will never finish. <laughs> I also have the um, the Samira bag. I think it's called. I think it's called a Samira. But mine's lo it's luggage. It's a huge Samira bag. I have the Noe. This is one I did buy at Neiman's, brand new. I think I paid five hundred dollars for it in the nineties. I love this bag. This is the one that the um, Louis Vuitton made to carry two bottles of champagne. So it does carry champagne <laughs> quite nicely. And I love it. It's an essential travel bag for me, too, though I used it all the time. It shows every year that it has, but it is not torn. It is not cracking. The, look how thick that leather is. So, you know, when people question why Louis Vuitton, why the price, because 90s and it's still here, no cracks, and this is canvas. You could throw this in a cage with a lion and it would come out impeccable. So I paid $90, I mean $900, $500, excuse me, in the 90s, $500 at Neiman's. Today, you can find one on the Real Real, on eBay, in worse condition than this one. And this To me, this is an okay condition. It's got some watermarks and things like that, but no cracking, no nothing. And you'll still pay $500. So that's why, why I love Louis Vuitton, because they are forever. Clean the leather or the lining. Well, I don't, I don't do too much cleaning. There's something, certain linings are tacked, so you can't pull them out. If you can't pull them out, don't touch them, because many times the leather will bleed on the lining. So it's really, really hard to clean handbags. That's why I don't really buy bags. Um, you know, unless it's like that Gucci, I couldn't, I wouldn't even care if it was torn on the inside. I was going to have that Gucci. But um, yeah, just be very careful with that. Make sure you can pull out the lining. A lot of people also spot treat, but you have to be really careful. I did some spot treating on a bag. I've ruined them, especially black. Black has a lot of dye in it. And any little wetness, that's going to bleed through on the lining. You're going to wind up with a much, much worse looking bag than what you started with. And a lot of people recommend, you know, spot treating with a toothbrush. But again, you just have to be really careful. And even if you can pull out the lining, make sure that you hang them separately so that the water doesn't drip from, you know, from one end to the other. Because again, you'll get that transfer of dye. And what I have done with my Louis Vuittons that get, um, and that the oils and all that will darken the leather. It doesn't bother me too much. I know a lot of people have their speedies really, really dark. Um, but a lot of people will use like packing tape and put it on there and it will lift some of that dirt. Uh, don't do anything that I'm recommending because I do it. That's all I'm saying. I have done it and it does work for me. Also on my Courtney that has absolutely no sign of wear, in my opinion, on the leather, I um, I have wiped it down, but really just with a cloth. And I make sure to put that scarf through that hardware where it's going to be touching the canvas or the leather because that, that hardware oxidizes and it will damage your leather. It will damage your leather. And uh, that's why a lot of people put scars on the handles of their speedies, too. Oh, thank you, Pamela. So that's pretty much it with cleaning. Other than that, I mean, I know people recommended, Miss Carrie recommended something with the for the crock, I think, right, Miss Carrie? For the alligator bag or the crock bag. Alcohol baby wipes are good, too. Yeah, especially the better brands. A lot of people do that. And now they're selling Louis Vuittons that are already... Uh, season, so you don't have to worry about when they get that first drop of water on them or anything. But I mean, honestly, where else can you find a bag that 20 years ago was selling for 500 and today will sell for 500 used, you very used, <laughs> you know, that no way I could easily sell it for 400 any day of the week or more. If I put it on auction, possibly, but I won't let go of it. I love it. And it's, it's an essential bag. It's a bag that I, I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. It's lightweight. You can stuff it. The only thing you're going to carry is what you put in it. You don't have any of that extra weight, though. I do love leather bags. Like I said, 
there's a lot of Doonies that I absolutely adore, but I, I just can't handle the weight anymore on some of them. And um, so any other questions? If anybody's got any other questions, let me know. Other than that, I guess we're going to get ready to, to say good night. I really enjoyed having you guys here looking at the collection. And um, I did not even scratch the surface. I didn't show you the Sammy bag because it's really luggage. I didn't show you all the bags that I buy to resell, just some of them. But most of the ones I showed you are bags that, you know, to me are essential to me. I, I love, I really do. And there's always one bag that I, that I want. I, I, I like the Chanel bags. I like the classic little Chanel bag. They can be had for half price on, you know, secondhand places like eBay and and the real real and all of those. And I trust those places. I really do. I, I never tell people to avoid eBay. Yes, they have fakes, but they also have buyer protection. And if you don't utilize, it's just like the constitution. If you don't utilize the rights that we have and demand them, you don't get them. So if you buy something from eBay and someone gypped you and you just sit around and say, oh, they gypped me. Well, what did you do about it? You know, they do have buyer protection, make open a claim. Just because they argue with you in the, if they choose to argue with you, doesn't mean they're going to win that claim, especially if they didn't describe it, you know, and the same thing with the real, real and fashion file, they have um, buyer protection and they absolutely guarantee authenticity. And you can get some of these bags for half price or less. I just saw some amazing Gucci bags for $300. You know, that's what a Tory Burch on sale costs. So it's not, it's not something that can't be had. If it's something you really like and uh, what's wrong with buying a bag that someone used two times and they decided to buy another one, you know, and they're just done with that one for some reason or another, or for whatever reason, people give up bags. That's another thing about bags. You really have to almost test drive them. I can't do a double strap most of the time. That's why I like that little sass vintage eighties bag because they were genius enough to to put those two straps together. One one strap always falls down inevitably with me. Or like the Louis 25 that I had to resell. And I bought that one brand new at, at Neiman's as well. And I sold it, I think, 10 years later on eBay for if not the same price, a little bit more. And only because I could not find anything in it. I literally had to pull out my wallet, pull out my glasses in order to find my keys. It just, the mouth doesn't open wide enough for my things, for what I put in my bags. And yeah, bags are really personal. So make sure that, you know, you, you know what you like and that if you want to buy a certain bag, there's, everyone buys pre-love. Everyone buys pre-love. Even people who can afford to buy a brand new one will buy pre-loved. And because there are styles that are no longer in the stores, they've been retired, they haven't been reissued or whatnot, you really wanted that product from 2010, so you go look for it on Fashion File. All right, let me see what you guys are saying. You can't find it, you tell the difference with the truly vintage Sharifs. Oh, that's the very first one, and it's called it's called How to Buy and Sell Handbags, Miss Pamela. Maybe if you put in How to Buy and Sell Handbags, Thelma Thrift, it'll pop up. That's the way I look for my videos, too, sometimes, because I don't even know they're you know, oh, you're welcome, Miss Kirsten. Thank you so much for being here. I don't even know how to find some. I was telling Adrian today about a video I did on the topaz ring she was wearing because everyone remembers how topaz was the stone of the 70s. My my dad had bought me one for my birthday and it was stolen. My apartment was broken into when I was first uh, married, when we were first married. And they stole that ring. And that was the most heartbreaking thing. So I go on and on and about it in the video. And it's, I just, if anybody wants to find that video, I, sh I should have told Adrian, but maybe she'll watch this later. Uh, you would probably put a ring, a dad, and or something like that, and Thelma Thrift, and it would come up. So little keywords like that will bring up that video. But anyway, then I found it on, not it, but a very, similar one in 14 karat gold like the one my father had bought me and when it arrived it fit me like it was custom made so I felt this aura of my dad around me and you know the whole video thing is there if you want to enjoy it go look for it but um, that's what I do here I talk about jewelry I talk about handbags 
I talk about whatever I feel like talking about. Sometimes I do heart to hearts as well. I'm hoping to do one before Christmas. So come back and join me for that one as well. If there are no more questions, I will bid you good night. When they change the style. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I went into Prada looking for a similar messenger bag like the one I found that my daughter now loves. I've, I actually have asked her for it back and she said, no, mom, I, I love that bag. That's my bag. Uh, because it's, it's small, like those little travel bags, but it's deep. So you can't put a lot of things in there and they really didn't have anything like it. They had some with a little bit more, a little bit different strap or a little bit smaller. And even though he called some of them reissues, they didn't have the nineties Prada that everyone was sporting, which everyone wants now, including me, uh, which was kind of like a tote. And then it had the chain around it. That one was really, really nice. Um, I think it had like chains and then a reinforced strap, if I'm not mistaken. And I was telling you guys at the mall about Kate Spade bags. Kate Spade bags have gone absolutely down when I find a vintage one. And I think I still have one. No, maybe I sold it. I had the little teeny baguette. It was a simple one. And I believe it, um, I believe the older ones say Kate Spade, New York. Whereas now I think they just have the Kate Spade and the little Spade logo. And so I had one that I bought at Neiman's and it actually said Kate Spade, Texas, because it was made especially for Neiman's in Texas. And it was denim and it was that one that was like almost like the long shop, like this style, really boxy and square. And it was made impeccably beautiful. The lining, everything was gorgeous. And my sister got one too. Hers was a tweed. Hers didn't say Kate Spade, Texas, Kate Spade, New York. And it was like a tweed suit almost. And it was also just beautifully made, top shelf at Neiman's, absolutely top shelf. And now they just don't make them the same. They really don't. They start diffusing the brands and they just, and that's another reason why you want to patronize those places like Fashion File and The Real Real and eBay. Get there, go there. <laughs> and of course the auctions, if you ever find auctions that do bags and they know their bags and uh, if they don't know the bags, you need to know the bags because um, don't fall for that Goyard. <laughs> By the way, did y'all like the Goyard? <laughs> it's, a, it's a cute bag. It really is, but it's definitely a fake. And um, let me see if there's any more questions. Goyard's a really expensive brand, though. Mary Fancy's bags. I don't think I've heard of Mary Fancy. What is that? All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. We've been on an hour and 13 minutes. <laughs> you want the gray, Goyard? It's not gray. I, did I have a gray? I had the orangey. And maybe it is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I cannot sell them. I tell you what I will do. I will give them away. I will give them away. So stay tuned. And uh, we'll just call it our own secret code because I hate to promote counterfeits. You know that. Uh, but... If anybody wants it, I will give it away. I will never, ever sell a fake. I'm just, I'm not that, I can't stand it. Even if I can't afford something, I would never carry a fake. I just, maybe because I just don't like the idea of people stealing someone else's intellectual property. I just, I don't like that. I, I can't, I can't, it doesn't sit well with me. It's just me. You guys do what you want to do. We all do, right? It's got to live life our own way. But y'all have a wonderful holiday if I don't see you before then. Like I said, I hope to have a heart-to-heart -heart very soon. Of course, I'll bring you more jewelry videos. I do have some jewelry jars to bring you. I've made some amazing over-the-counter jewelry purchases that I have to show you. Y'all have a wonderful night, okay? Thank you again. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.